Well, today is Friday, July the 21st. My name is John Galantis, and as always, I'm here with Dr. Abadan Shah, and you're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have a question for Dr. Shah, anything you'd like to write in, suggest we talk about on the show, send us a text at 252-582-5028. You can also email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. And you guys can help us keep the conversation going by supporting the show, sharing it online, leaving us a good review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a link in the description of this podcast so you can do just that. But Dr. Shah, today's verse of the day is coming to us from Psalm 8. This is a very spacey, sort of ethereal psalm, and I think you guys are going to see why that's relevant here in just a second. But starting in verse 3, it says this, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful? of them, human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with the glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. I love that verse 3, when I consider your heavens, mm -hmm. the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars mm -hmm. which you have ordained, which means this is David's psalm, right? Mm -hmm. The superscript tells us that through the chief musician on the instrument of Gath, I have no idea what that means, <laughs> is Psalm of David. So right. David had some interest in studying the stars. Not That's studying right. the stars in the sense of astrology, but astronomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could look up and see the magnificence of the heavens and just that awe, that wonder that he yeah. felt. And we still have that even thousands of years later. Right. We can look up and see, gosh, God made all of this, how beautiful it is, how majestic. Yeah, and we tend to look at the ancients as if they were so enamored by the stars in the sense of worshiping them. Not true. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to go into Moses' tomb, the, right. the unfinished That's tomb. Right. That's right. And what's amazing about it is that up in the ceiling is the constellation, things that he drew up there mm -hmm. that still to this day, scholars are going, we know what he's trying to do is just hard to to, to, to just quantify that or, or put it into our our language today. But... He knew a lot about the sky Amen. and the stars. Amen. And, and so, so also David here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's so encouraging. And that's going to come into play a little bit later. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. We're going to start right after this ad. If you have any questions or suggestions for a new topic, text us, 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We have a very special guest, so we're going to hop right in. We'll be right back after this. Hey everyone, my name's Ellie. And I'm David. And we want to take a minute and let you know how we can actually serve you as you're listening to Clearview today. The Bible paints an extraordinary picture of who we are as a church body. The mission of Clearview Church is to lead all people into a life-changing, ever-growing relationship with Jesus Christ. A huge part of leading people is praying for them. A big reason that Christians have unanswered prayers in their life is because they're not praying. You know, 1 John 5.15 says... And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. If you're listening to the Clearview Today Show, we want to know how we can pray for you as well. There's a number of ways that you can get in touch with us at Clearview and share your prayer request, but the best way is by texting us at 252-582-5028. You can also send us an email at prayer at clearviewbc.org, or you can download the Clearview app on iTunes or Google Play. You know, on that app, there's a dedicated prayer wall that helps us to get to know what's going on in your life, how we can pray for you, and how we can take any necessary steps to get you moving in the right direction. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the show. Back to Clearview today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions, anything that you'd like for us, Dr. Shah, to talk about on the show, send us a text at 252-582-5028, or you can also email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. And if this is your first time ever tuning into the show, you've picked a great episode to tune in for the first time. I want to let you know who's talking to you today. Dr. Abadan Shah is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website. That's abadanshah.com. And Dr. Shah, we've got a very, very special guest with us today. I am really excited because today's special guest is a good friend, mm -hmm. 
uh, a person I uh, love, admire, a uh, fellow believer, and uh, one of the smarter guys I know in this world. Yeah, that's right. And that's Leo. How you doing, my friend? <laughs> Good to see you, Leo. Oh, I'm glad to be here with you guys. You're too kind. Uh, we go, we've known each other a long time A long now. time now. Oh, it's close to 10 years. That's it? right. Yeah. That's right. And I'll tell you this. Um, among many of the talents that he has, and we're going to talk about something very different today, mm -hmm. but watching you play bass, <laughs> my goodness. First time I watched him play, and I know mm -hmm. Dave, uh, John has and oh, David yeah. has. I'm like, what in the world is he doing? Because it's, it's phenomenal. I've never seen anybody play bass like that. How long, like, have, you, how long have you been playing bass it's, with it's us on the worship team? It's a passion. You yeah. can tell, right? Yeah. <laughs> how, how long have you been playing with us on the worship team here at Cleveview? Uh, it, was, uh, it was right around 13. 2013? Wow. So yeah. almost that's, 10 years. That's 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Been, you've been with us 10 years. 13, 14, right around Yeah. 13. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, we've been blessed. We've been blessed to have you. And it is, I, I agree with Dr. Shaw, like there are still times 10 years later where I'll be singing and leading and I'll hear, I'll, really, I'll feel you playing something. I'll feel <laughs> it in my chest and I'll, I, I don't try to do it, but I turn around. I'm like, oh my goodness, I felt that one. Well, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it's supposed to be. That's right. I was going to say, that's how you know good bass when you feel it. You don't even hear it. You just feel it in your chest or in your shoes. It's all about the bass. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no trouble. Well, Dr. Shaw, today is a very special day, July That's 21st. Do right. you want to kind of kind of set up our episode today? Yeah, of course. So July 20th, 1969. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is when two American astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, they, they landed the, uh, the Apollo 11, mm -hmm. which took off from Kennedy Space Station mm -hmm. um, and traveled, get ready for this, 240,000 miles wow. over a 76-hour period, hundreds of millions of people watching this thing on television. and um, In black and white. In black and white. <laughs> to be did you watch it? <laughs> yeah, I did. Wow. I didn't because um, I was in the mind and heart of God. I was not <laughs> you had, in hadn't born yet. <laughs> I, wow. But... Um, so, so anyway, this was, you know, part of that space race that went on between the United States and USSR, mm -hmm. who was going to be the first. And, of course, they were. And this whole Apollo program, Leo, correct me if I'm wrong, $24 billion? I don't know what the number is. But, but it was way up there. It was, it was the sky's the limit at that, at yeah. that, in that period. Uh, there was a, a, a passion and a will. Right to make something extraordinary happen. That's right. And um, it was not limited. Right. Um, the limits came later on. Right. And they're significant limits. And there's good reason for limits. That's right. In today's money, I would say that's like $100 billion. If you're talking about $24 billion back then, just the way the economy is today, mm -hmm. way, way more. And it is, it is really amazing yeah. how they pulled that off. That's right. With uh, pencils and drafting boards, right, and T squares and slide rules, calculators were yeah. a new thing. Yeah, I heard. I heard, I don't know how true this is, but I heard that like the data that they had at the space center was like like the memory was like micro like uh me, like megabytes at best. Like oh, their computer. It was less than that. It was in the thousands. Wow. Called the K. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. Incredible. And today we're sitting here. This is 2023. We're talking about AI. Mm hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff of science fiction movies. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to pass in many ways, as well as the horror movies. That's right. Sadly. But wow. uh, that's part of it. That's, that's right. incredible. So the next, so they landed on the 20th and the next day. Those famous words. Those famous words, which uh, the are next day was only a few hours later. Really true. Hours later, true. That's right. On the twenty first. Well, they they had to get their act together because you know right. when they were coming in for hmm. a landing, they had it all uh, planned out. There was a there was a there was a computer, a guidance computer that right. was in place, but it was coming down on a rocky area, uh -huh. and so he had to take the controls and fly it. He manually over flew the, the I didn't rocks. know that. Yeah, he, that's something. Uh, fly it over the rocks and found a place right when the fuel was running out. It, Ooh, was, wow. it was a close call. <laughs> I can imagine. Wow. Yeah, and there was no do-overs there. Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, would you say life and, or death? Oh, yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah, this is not something to play absolutely. with. Absolutely. Wow. It's wow. so inhospitable. 
I'm excited about this I know. episode to have Leo here today. I, w- I was gonna say this so. Is fun. Do, do you want to explain like why is why why Leo here? Because you actually worked for a good portion of your life for NASA. Well, yeah, I I, I started. Well, I was 10 years old when they landed. Right. And it made an impression on me. My dad was a mechanical engineer, so I was kind of set up in that area anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, coming up to high school, mm-hmm. I had a choice. I, li- I was living in uh, the New York metropolitan area, a place called Rockaway, actually. <coughs> and I had the choice to go to the local high school, mm-hmm. or I could go to the special hmm. technical high school. Ooh. Mm. Brooklyn Technical High School. Ooh, it's a, it was a big wow. deal. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I had the opportunity. So I said, well, if I take the test, at least I have the opportunity. That's right. So I took the test, and I passed the test. So uh. I said, well, if I, I'll go there, and if I like it, I'll stay. Right. And, and if I don't, I can still go to my local high school. That's right. I ended up going there for four years. Wow. And so after two years, you have to choose a major in this technical high school, and I chose mechanical engineering. And I was, I was kind of set up. From that uh, time, 13 years old. Wow. Leave your life's life's work, decision, up to a 13-year-old. Go figure. (laughs) (laughs) And thank God you made the right... Well, it turned out to be good for me. Took the right turn. It's it's not good for everybody. Right. But uh, it was good for me. Yeah. Yeah. I love the knowledge of how things work. I mean, it's beautiful. I watch a... I I see a light bulb glow, and I know why. Yeah. Mm. How did you get there... from how did you get from there to aeronautics? Well, I went to uh, a, a college, mm-hmm. studying mechanical engineering, figuring out what am I going to do, and um, that's when I dropped out. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about that? <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> stay in school. Stay in school. <laughs> like you, you can you can work for NASA, but you do got to stay in school. Uh, well, <clears throat> well, hey, this is how it worked out. You know, it's kind yeah. of a funny thing. I was doing well, mm-hmm. but you mentioned I was a bass player. Well, right. I started picking up bass in high school. I w- went with some friends who were not doing so well in school, but I liked them anyway. And right. You should come over and watch us. We have a band. And so uh-huh. I went to their, went on the subway to their place in Brooklyn all by myself, you know, in high school. You don't do those things. Today. Right, right, right. But I did that. High school, uh, at just hopped on a subway, went over to the place, and they were playing some some songs that I was familiar with. I liked music, uh-huh. and I could tell the bass player was messing up. Mm-hmm. I could tell, and so wow. I said I could do that. Yeah, and that's that was came through went through, went through my mind. I I could do that. Mm-hmm. So you, you had you played bass before? No. <laughs> so <laughs> I was I, I was familiar with the songs, and I heard them play. Guitar player, that sounds about right. right. Drummer. That sounds about right. But the bassist Bass player, wasn't hitting on much. That sounds not quite right. That's said, awesome. And I, I said, and I was watching what he could do. Yeah. What he was doing, I said, I could do that. And so um, I talked my parents into picking up a used bass. Hmm. And in two weeks, I was playing in that band. Wow. Man. That's, That's incredible. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. Uh, I don't know what happened to the bass player. But <laughs> <laughs> they can't even find him. <laughs> like he's gone. So I was playing playing bass in different bands all through high school and in through college and and although I was doing well in my grades pretty good I mean I was a high two point something average not terrible but I looked like I should be on stage someplace mm-hmm. I was not looking like a regular engineering student right and so yeah. by the time I was about ready to graduate with a mechanical right. engineering degree the bands were getting better and better and better, and mm-hmm. I had the opportunity to go full time. We were uh, in a band playing, and we had paying gigs, and we uh-huh. had the opportunity to go full time. This is a fun story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I went to my college advisor. I explained the situation, and he pushed back in his chair. He looked up into the corner of the room, and he says, "You know, I wanted to go when I was your age, and I didn't. So let me tell you something. If you graduate," and do this thing, people are going to ask, what were you doing? Mm -hmm. If you do this thing and then graduate, you'll be a graduating senior like everybody else, and no one will ask a question. Hmm. Huh. And so I dropped out that day. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Uh, What a... Of course, my parents didn't understand. Yeah, I I can't imagine they were super My dad was upset. My, My mom believed in me. I like to say she believed in me even... 
when I was unbelievable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> So I dropped out, and we went Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Texas. We uh, played all over the place. Mm -hmm. We were a pretty good band. I've yeah. seen the uh, videos. Uh, and when, when does that? Where does that, that video fall in your timeline? That video is, is later on. So that band broke up. I went. Uh, I figured, well, New York or L.A., that's where I need to go next. Right, of course. I had family in New York, so I went back to New York. I got in a number of different bands in New York. And that's where the video was shot. Can we show that video at the end of this episode? Oh, you don't want that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, we were a good bar band. Yeah. We, we, had, uh, we had a record, and we tried our best, and uh -huh. that kind of thing. But So uh, I had met my wife mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, decided, let's give that engineering thing a, a try. A try right. again, yeah. So... We loaded up the car. I, I figured, well, I, I'll just go to a college locally here. Right. And they said, well, no, if you want to graduate from our college, you've got to spend two plus years. Mm -hmm. So mm. I called my old alma mater, and the, the uh, curriculum hadn't changed. So she said, no, you can come back. Your college okay. credits will be reinstated, no problem. And so I had you to go back went to Arizona. Went right back in Arizona. Where, where okay. I had uh, dropped out from. Okay. All right, back in now. So I went back to Arizona. I went back in the summertime, and so I took a calculus uh, summer school to mm. kind of refresh. Right. Because uh, I had senior level classes left. Right. I had uh, dynamics of machines, second semester thermodynamics. Right. I had I had my senior project to do. I mean, it was a it was a big it deal. Was a big right. Deal. Right. But uh, I went back. And I took it seriously. I raised my cue. I graduated a little over 3-0. Cut my hair. Got a suit from <laughs> Sears. <laughs> did the interview shuffle. Uh -huh. And just like the college advisor said, I got hired by Douglas Aircraft in Long Beach, California. Wow. wow. Now, at what po point was your conversion? Because that, that also happened. That was you later still. Okay. So th at this point, you did not know Christ. I knew who he was, you did, but you didn't I know. But you hadn't made it. You hadn't made a decision. To no, follow well, him. I had. Okay. I had decided it was a fraud. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. I had decided it That's was a right. fraud, and it was a crutch for for weak people who did not know any better. Hmm. Mm. That's, wow. that's I'm loving where this. I was. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I've, I've known this story for a long time, and I've heard it several times. But to our <laughs> listeners, our viewers, man, you know when people say. Only, you know, simple-minded people follow Jesus Christ. That's just that's, not that's true. That's not true. Well, that's where I believed. And yeah. I used to try to convince people. I would argue, I would debate with believers mm. to try to convince them that they were uh, wrong. Mm. Wow. Mm. So how do you end up from there to, to working for NASA? Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm working in, um, in aerospace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... Um, meeting a bunch of people. I started a little side business because I was building a little family. We had one kid, we had another boy, we had three boys all together. Mm -hmm. And I started to be involved in a, uh, a, a our own business mm -hmm. where uh, we got together with other like-minded people and I was in excited about the way they saw life. Mm. I could see some uh, like a like a peace, a stability, a right. strength, and I wanted what that was. Right, that's right. And I did some research, and they thought that it was Jesus. Mm. I said, "Wait a second, that can't be the case." That's right. That can't be the case. That's right. How can these smart guys do this? Right. And yeah. so, since I had a technical background, and and I started to ask the question, "Why is it that they believe?" Right. Why? And so I, that was that was the beginning. Of that it. was the conception, I guess. Where that was the conception, right? Yeah. And so that was uh, that would have been about ninety. Mm -hmm. Nineteen ninety. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And in the meantime, now you're working more and more with space. Stuff? Well, I didn't. Well, you could say that. See, right. I, I left Aerospace Direct, and I started working for a software company. And so okay. we were selling engineer software mm. to all the companies that do engineering all throughout Southern California. Oh, is this the software that you still use? And it's the software I still use. It yes. was a, from a company 
I guess it doesn't really matter. But I was going to the, the Lockheed's, TRW, Hughes Space and Com, Skunk Works. We would go to all the different high-end wow. space companies, and I would show them how to do what th they were already doing hmm. faster, better, and, more and efficiently. cheaper. More okay. efficiently. Wow. Okay. And so I got to see all these different engineering environments mm -hmm. in aerospace uh, and space satellites all the way down to... I did Barbie's Miata at some point. Barbie's <laughs> Miata? <laughs> what does that mean? Did. Like what the toys? What tell? Like the toys? You the engineered toys. the toys? Yeah. <laughs> Same program. Yes. <laughs> wow. So hey. all these things you're doing, you're becoming the premier expert on this program. Right. I, I started to develop a, a reputation for being the higher gun that I could go right. to these these uh, these space aerospace companies and I could see something on the table that they're currently designing. Right. And I would get it on the screen before we'd left. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And they... Uh, course they were impressed mm -hmm. and uh, they'd be more likely to buy the software sure wow. yeah that, yeah you know we were selling software that's right the software though was very good mm -hmm. and an American success story became the dominant player in about 10 years period Wow and I was there through that period right but you did eventually leave that software company I did hmm. yeah. where did you go from I went there? out on my own okay get my own job or find another uh, place of employment, and I started my own company. So, uh, so I think that's what's kind of the key is that when we say that you work for NASA, you didn't, you were not a NASA employee. You were a contractor that NASA sought out for these projects. Yeah, because okay. you were really good at what you did. Yeah. That's how that worked out. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, we talked about that a little bit on, uh, I think, on Monday's episode. Like when people are skillful at what they do, when they're competent, it, 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 it people will seek those uh, those people out. Right. Mm -hmm. Word of mouth spreads. People start to wave your flag. Mm -hmm. You think I'm good? You should see this guy. Mm. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And so uh, I got a call from uh, from Boeing in Huntsville, and uh, I ended up helping them with some difficult problems that they were having with a spaceship that they were making. Wow. And then they were asked by NASA to put in a bid for their the successor to the space shuttle. Mm -hmm. And I ended up putting together the database for that bid Boeing got the contract yeah. to build, and it's called SLS. They call it different names, but that's yeah. what it's called. And uh, and so that was that was a big deal. Is there anything? And this is just us talking. This is just you and me. Is there anything <laughs> sort of kind of juicy or exciting that is declassified that you can talk about without getting in? Well, the the industry, the science yeah. of going fast uh -huh. is really really cool, and these things go really fairly <laughs> fast. You mentioned how far they went in right. just those few that just 76 think, hours. Just think how fast that is. 40,000 miles. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. The, the speeds the, the speeds are yeah. fantastic. A quarter of a quarter of a million miles in 3 days. Yeah. That's insane. That's right. Wow. Right, you can do the math and figure out how fast that is. And just just think just think about uh a, a, a an orbiting satellite is uh, roughly fifteen to seventeen mm -hmm. thousand miles an hour. I think it just kind of goes amazing. It, it does. It is. It really is. And it's something that goes back to something you've said, Doctor Shaw, before. Just p if, since the beginning of time, we've been fascinated by this, the heavens. Absolutely, we've, we've looked up to the stars and we've seen that. Man, this testifies to God's grace and That's God's right. glory. Well, the very first verse in the entire Bible is in the beginning, mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. created the heavens. That's right, and the earth. So That's heavens right. come first, and heavens are not just a place where God sits. This is heavens as in the skies, mm. heavens as in all the celestial bodies. We're talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. Thousands of years ago, right? People recognized that's right the sun comes up and goes down it goes right. up and comes down but it changes mm -hmm. right every day it's a little different that's right some days it's longer some days it's shorter that's right and they start to figure out exactly what day that was mm. how'd they figure that out the idea of a they, calendar they yeah. were watching they that's were watching right. they were seeing the seasons come and go but they come back every year it's not just a random occurrence that's right that's right. And they started figuring things out, and that happened thousands. That's right. 
Amazing. Thousands of years ago. And, and it really, really is pretty yeah. cool. Do you think that played a part in your ultimate conversion when you finally kind of gave your life to Christ? Well, I know what happened. Mm -hmm. they were the, the question, why mm -hmm. do they mm -hmm. believe? Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so there is a Jesus. Who did he say he was? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. okay, so how do we know why or who he said he was? Mm -hmm. We have no recordings or anything, but there is something recording, and right. that is the Bible. Yeah, the Bible. Word. That's okay, right. So there is a Bible. There is a Jesus. Why should we think that they are what they say they are? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was quite the skeptic, as you like mentioned. Oh, I'm sure. And so I started to try to find out why all these people throughout history think it's what they it says it is. Right. And how could they be all wrong? Right. But that wasn't enough. It, would, it, took, it took more. Mm -hmm. Right. But at uh, least you were an honest skeptic. Yeah, Le I'd like to think that I was yeah. honest. Well, I, yeah. I came around yeah. eventually, <laughs> to, yeah. and so this is what it came down to. The Bible is a book. Mm. It says it is what it says it is. Right. The breathed. God breathed Word of God. Word, yeah. word, word of God. But how could that be? Mm. Well, people had to write it. Okay, so so if people wrote it, maybe they had their own influence involved. Mm. You know, that was part of what it started. But how could it be what it says it is and not change over all these years right. mm -hmm. and not be what it says it is? Because mm. if it was written and inspired by people, they would always be influencing right. the message. That's right. And it would be changing. It like would be adulterated. It would be corrupted. It, it would right. be corrupted. Right. And, and that was the main thing. So, okay, so if the Bible is what it says it is, right. uh, what does the Bible say Jesus mm. said and who he said he was? That's right. His self-identification as the Son of God. That's right. As I God incarnate. I am. Mm. I am, yes. Holy cow. He claimed, <laughs> yeah. he claimed the title of God for himself. That could be a full five, six episodes just on its own. Oh, <laughs> I am. <laughs> well, it has been, I'm sure. Yeah throughout the eons but uh that that's what it was that's what it was for me okay so so if the bible is what it says mm. it is and that means that jesus is who he said he was mm. then who am i right holy cow yeah and that was that was and it was that kind of a switch it wasn't a kind of a gradual thing right and then did it change the way you went back to your program your drawing board looking at the heavens how did that impact you oh it it changed how i uh felt about other people it, mm. it it changed how i felt about my place in this world about my wife and my family and and why it is that i do what i do mm -hmm. wow uh, yeah uh, and uh, it, it it yields a very uh very strong sense of responsibility oh wow yeah. And so that that was a big deal. I can imagine. You know, you don't have to be somebody like Leo who is designing machines that work in space. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't that what you do? I mean, that's, that's pretty that's cool. That's what I do, yeah. I've seen some of your work, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just it's, wow. It's hey, somebody's got it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> but, but, but you can be just anybody, and well, once you meet the God of creation, you meet Jesus Christ, it changes you, and it That's changes right. and impacts your life, your relationships, uh, it, it, the way you see the world. Mm -hmm. It changes everything. You think you're a big shot? No yeah. way. Now you yeah. realize you're not. <laughs> yeah, you meet the, the person who created all of this, all right. of this stuff that you're studying. I have my place. Mm -hmm. I have my place, and I appreciate the gifts that I have been given. That's right. Amen. That's and right. Uh, and so um, that, that's why I play in the church band mm. because it's a gift. I love it. And I should not hide it under a bushel. That's right. It needs to be for the glory of God. For the yeah. glory of God, that's and that right. that's an important thing. Yeah, wow. I love it. It's such, your your testimony is such an inspiration to me personally, and I know to Dr. Shaw as well. It, it's so encouraging to see that the people of God are not who the world paints us out to be. You the know, simple-minded people yeah, right. who just, 
you know, they believe against belief and just try to do the best they can right. to believe in something they know may not be true. That's right. not the case. Right. And, and I need to mention also, science does not disprove that's right. a belief in a deity. Wow. That's right. Wow. It does not. Wow. If you look at it more closely, you might find that science proves that's right. the other. Mm-hmm. That's right. right. I almost feel like we need to have another show. I know. I, I feel like it's <laughs> our time is up. <laughs> we, we our time is up, but man, oh, this we're, is we're stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, if you guys enjoyed today's topic, and I know full well that you did, or if you have any suggestions for stuff that we can talk about in future episodes, make sure you let us know. Send us a text, 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. And don't forget, you can support us financially on that same website. That's clearviewtodayshow.com. Every time that you give, every time you donate, you are making an impact for God's kingdom here on earth. Thank you so much for listening. Leo, thank you for being here today, my friend. Glad to be here. We'll see you guys next time on Clearview Today. (laughs) 